So of course I didn't realise the kind of ways of painting that I adopted in college needed full time application. Like you couldn't yeah. do this part time because um, you're, you're looking at these mature painters who had gotten to the stage where all they did was paint like this. And you're looking at the best work they did after years of this. Not all the stuff that didn't make the grade for them. You yeah. never see that. So you have the sense if you don't produce work like that, that you're not very good. And, uh, and of course, yeah, so that was it. So on and off, like, in a very fractured, inconsistent way, working, renting studios, so bit by bit, you know, struggling through the years, doing exhibitions where you can. Of course, as a painter, people ask you to paint pictures for them, and that's cash. Hard cash, straight up, so you do. And yeah. of course you think, well, this is not a serious artistic piece, but it's, it'll obviously help me in yeah. practice. And it does over years, it does. Like. Yeah. And it kind of, it gives you a, a lot of, it bursts your bubble in terms of having this big artistic ego that, like, yeah. Oh, no, I only do fine. I only, I only, I don't. I'm a painter, and I only do serious work, and I don't even have to work for a living. Because, but you know what? You do. They yeah. do. They stop you. They're. But after a while, it gets yeah. to be a problem because, like I said earlier, uh, the cash is shit. Cash gets worse, and time and time and motion study wise. Uh, it works out. You're not getting much for what you're doing. And you're compromising. But you can't say no to. Yeah. And you end up doing these. And for me, see, I wasn't getting much chance to do my own work. So all I was doing was commission. So all my interest in paintings was being put into these. So I ended up doing really long, overwrought pieces. And people who were buying them wouldn't have really known the difference. So they think, oh, it's great anyway. Yeah. And they didn't really realize why they were taking so long. And I suppose after a while, it does, it, it, kinda, it all counts, I suppose, in your learning how to use painting, learning what you want to do in the type of painting. It all does, positively or negatively, it does, but it comes to the point where you just have to stop and draw a line under them. Did you feel uh, an onus to stay up and going after college? Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's where it was at. That's where everything was at. And, um, yeah, because you, be, you have to be, you want to be part of a scene, even a social scene, even if you're not getting any work done or you've no studio or whatever, just to be in touch with it. And going to see exhibitions every week. I was every week going to the galleries and stuff. And getting really off the most of these shows I was going to see were more paint like less and less of them were painting. It was all different kinds of art. Yeah. Installation, video, all kinds of postmodern tendencies coming through, more and more dominant than painting. Painting was becoming a real minority. That's so when I saw that Peter Doig show, it was like, I heard of this guy, I heard the name, and he was like up for the Turner, did he win or is he nominated the Turner Prize? So I was like, this guy's this is a big name. And I wasn't expecting, so I was expecting it to be like really austere, conceptual. Because the only painting that's getting any traction in the yeah. art world has to be like conceptual art done in paint. Yeah. And this was completely not that. So I was shocked at first, but then the more, it was just, then I saw a piece of his in Emma and then so on and so on. And I said, that is just a mess. Yeah. How is this painting? Oh, this is all, oh, it's all, oh, I see, it's all ironic. So it's yeah. like bad painting. And I said, that's, that's shit as well. But then the more, I just couldn't, it was fascinating though, and the more and more I, I loosened up and got and followed this fascination with it. I said, oh no, totally, it's even better. And then the more, it's like, so by, <laughs> and of course everything drips really slowly in art and painting. So five years later, I'm like, this, no, this really is like a better way to paint. And it's just more interesting. And what did you do for after college while well, you're painting, you're living in an apartment? You're working as a barman for a while. Bar all the kind of jobs that you do. <laughs> Bartending. I was working in a rigger house. Huh? You were working as a rigger. Yeah, then that that became a more regular job after um, rigging concerts, building scaffolds for stages, and crewing um, concerts and events and stuff. Because I thought it was a flexible. It was it was flexible enough from time to time you'd get say five days off in a row and you try and get some painting done. I thought this would be good because I could take you could take a week off 
and do some work and then go and work for two weeks or three weeks and then yeah. in the summertime you get like three months solid work and you make good money and then you won't but it never worked out like that because it was so haphazard as a painter you kind of want to know when you're able to work so you can sort of like the planning is, is yeah it's a strange for the type of painting I wanted to do I needed strange. things to be planned and looking yeah. back I probably should have just embraced the chaos and just embraced the way of working that was like notebook based or something or even just drawing freehand and whenever snatches from whenever I could work and yeah. make something out of that but I had this really really uh, rigorous preconception of painting it had to be and it's still Richter based I think it's funny this I, kind of painting, I'm only realising as you're saying that yeah. I still have that and yeah. it's ludicrous one epic fucking masterpiece yeah. after another yeah. instead of a process yeah which is loose and he just organically <laughs> Like like you, you, were you consider a painting, I consider a painting a process. Yeah. In a way, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Yeah. The painting should be the end result of the process yeah, yeah. that's happened in notebooks and stuff. Totally. The way they teach it, but the way that you ultimately become alienated to I was like, fuck no. I think the way and you kind of came out of NCAD with this idea that each and every painting, it would be really great if each piece was just, in and of itself, just planned and made. And it's all No world. sketches and very little of a traditional painterly hand to it more and the process and processedness of it yeah. is part of its appeal and hence yeah. the subject matter that you're taking is from processed media and like a lemon uh, like a lemon acid eating yeah. into foam or something that the yeah. painting would just kind of emanate yeah it looks like it just emanated from the canvas yeah L like a photograph yeah right? Yeah. But it would be more unique because this is made of paint, and it's just and it's those yeah. tiny little, it's the tiny little deviations from the photograph that make it. Yeah, that give it its appeal. It's funny so this way of painting, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was very, very impractical to take into the real world. And like I said earlier, only if you were a, a, a self-sufficient painter who that's all you did, yeah. you could do that. And then the idea of like using projectors and having this processed, this processed, this mechanized where so little was left to kind of chance and you project the image and you have this and it's all... And even at the start I thought we thought that would make it all quicker, actually made it much slower. Yeah. But we didn't trust in our own hand and eye at the time as well. Like So, so I, want, I want this to be on a large canvas, I want it rigorous as fuck. Well, I want it to be cold and clean. Yeah. And I want the tracing to be a part, like a... Yeah. And it's like a, a conceptual it's, part, it's like a, so we're bordering onto conceptual art again. But it's a way of abdicating yeah. responsibility. Yeah, exactly. So. The abdication yeah. of responsibility and using that as a symbolic. Yeah. But that being symbolic, when there's a flip side to that, in that we weren't—I don't think we were confident in our drawing abilities because we weren't coming from the real traditional training. Yeah. Like everyone around us in art college was using more, more, more modern media and more distanced media from the old techniques. So yeah. we kind of wanted to keep some hand in that field and go like, yeah, we're modern, we're yeah. with it, but we, we choose to do this. Yeah. We choose to use oil on canvas. In some kind, there's some kind of irony there as well. We're using oil and canvas and these things as ready-made props. Yeah. There was all they already that. have a cultural currency. Yeah, they, yeah exactly. They're and symbolic. Here, in the that that kind of answers a question I was going to ask you. You went from oil to acrylic then. Most people go the other way. Right? I know, yeah. Well, recently I just, for pure fun, uh, I've just gone back to water-based media oil, or sorry, acrylic watercolor gouache has become my favorite one. And doing stuff like this, doing album covers. And actually it came from work doing in props and films, which is another thing I ended up doing as a day job, per se. Painting like rep replicas and cover versions of stuff like Monet and and Cezanne and people like this as ordered commissioned pieces for film for the film industry and I kind of enjoyed them and they're lucrative enough and I decided to do it at my own so I wouldn't have to do oil based commissions that's one of the reasons so doing uh, heavy metal album covers and rock album covers and then as well as that hold on how did you go from where did they come in for in terms of commissions yeah commissions yeah these are commissions for tv and film yeah so the most recent one that i did was those that 
three piece Monet Cathedral. Where did Cathedral. the heavy metal album covers and purely from <laughs> just from me? I just wanted yeah. to do them. So it, what uh, you're saying is yeah. from doing these copies of paintings for uh, TV shows yeah, film and film. Uh, you kind of came to a thing of going, and you're using acrylic, so it can be done really quickly. They were ordered to be done in acrylic, so they could have them very quickly. They have to dry. Dry quickly, be on the walls by the end of the week, yeah. or in a couple of days, yeah. and you'd be paid well for them, be pressure enough, but ultimately good fun, and there was actually a lot of freedom in doing it. And I just, like, going f all the way back to, like, my totally formative influences, like, album covers and comics yeah. so I decided I just wanted to do just purely wanted this, to do them there's no other justification because it really is because we're, yeah. we're getting so full circle now and stuff if, like, I think other people might think that this is uh, yeah. others amongst our friends may think that, <laughs> that this, <laughs> this is going to sound weird that it's just that you've just suddenly become kind of shit no 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 do you know what I mean <laughs> that, it, that you're, you're suddenly using acrylics you see, I kind of knew that it was a deliberate choice on oh, your part, true. but not from talking to you. Like, yeah. You just got the sense that, uh, and the choice to do album covers and uh, things from people's, it's kind of nostalgia or something. Totally. But it's yeah. deliberately yeah. naive. Is that Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, de yeah. Deliberately naive, um, deliberately uh, uncool. Yeah. In a certain way, but to a whole other bunch of people, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's I'm not doing it for either of those per se. I don't mind. See, I know what you're saying. Either of those sides. You can't say, oh well, I didn't want to be cool. So fuck being cool. So I went back to do album covers. That's not true. <laughs> no, it's not. You, you're very, you're very deliberately making the choice to do something. Yeah. Deliberately naive and and slightly goofish. Yeah. But not at the expense of the warmth it has for yeah, other yeah. people, genuinely. Totally, yeah. yeah. I think that's a good way. So I'm doing, do, to do these under the name, the pseudonym Barbarian I chose, was to deliberately free myself up from anything I've ever done before and my own quote-unquote fine art work, which is, they're in two separate camps now, so one of them frees up the other. Yeah. And I go back and forth between them. Uh, I'd like the name as well because it's... <laughs> The starting was a joke, jokely, joking combination of my name and Barbara's name. Yeah. And because she was the one who really suggested, when I did that, the Monet triptych for that film recently, and she said, well, you could do these all the time, and then you wouldn't really feel the need to do commissioned oil pieces that you're getting really tired of. And I said, yeah, yeah. you're really right, because these, uh, these would be much easier to sell. They're, they're, they're really good fun to do it anyway. Yeah. I learn a lot from doing them uh, in terms of technique and process and everything. And uh, there's nothing I couldn't, I can't do under that name. But you term. seem to have abandoned technique to a degree in terms of the acrylic yeah. stuff you're doing. And when you do something, when you say something that's as. Um, you make a kind of a deliberate challenge or bet. Yeah. Do you, is there any musician that you like a photograph of? I'll paint you that. Yeah. But that's a kind of deliberate... No, the, the approach is, I like it, I'm just going to yeah. do it. But it's also a challenge to, yeah. to yourself because there's no, there's no uh, easy artistic currency with that. You'll yeah. have to find it. Yeah. You, you'll have to find it. Yeah. For some people on the surface, that might be a bit embarrassing. They yeah. might be like, he's what? Totally. But, but I mean, by doing that, you have to now. You'll just. You're just gonna have to find how you fucking yeah, be yeah. an artist now. Yeah, absolutely. Through that, through that kind of strange yeah, yeah. challenge, like. Yeah, I've realised that. And in some of those paintings, yeah. there's there's no there's no technique. There's no blending. There's yeah, no layers. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you have to. I have to make the point here that yeah. in your oil paintings, right? Mm. There might have been six or seven, nine layers mm -hmm. of paint, mm -hmm. right, built from a really high colour yeah, up yeah. to a kind of muted and, and shining yeah, from the yeah. inside out. With the acrylics... No, it's one layer. It's one layer. It's all in one go. And no blending. Ideally, they're done in one sitting, uh, in a day, or a little bit more or less, 
they have to be done as quickly as possible, hence the gouache and acrylic. I want them to be done as quickly as possible. I want them to be done as direct onto the